Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I hit a garage sale up yesterday and I scored. I got a nice brand new old fat wrap. This is the just the deep dive in one, but it's the gold plate, which is an awesome color. I also got an old wiggle wart, uh, kind of beaten up, but if I see one, I'm going to snatch it up for a couple of bucks like I did. And I was getting ready to put those away and I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to share with you guys like my five favorite all-time discontinued baits. Uh, maybe you find them in a garage sale. Maybe you see them in a flea market. Maybe even you find one hanging on a bait shop wall somewhere. If you do, you might want to pick some of these up because they are proven fish catchers. All of these have been mainstays in my arsenal for years. Uh, they still catch fish to this day. The problem is for me... I only break them out generally in tournament situations, and they're really difficult to find or really difficult to replace. Now, if you cruise the interweb a little bit, you probably could find some on there. Uh, I don't know what they're necessarily all going for, but even having said that, they can be still difficult to find if you really spend a lot of time searching for them. So let's dive right into these. You know, the first one, well, I mentioned I got this fat wrap at a garage sale. One of my all-time favorites is in the Fat Wrap family, and this one I just plucked out of my tackle box. This is the old Rattlin' Fat Wrap 4. Just a little guy. This is the hot mustard color, one of my favorites. You can see how beaten and bruised this one is. I have caught so many fish on this bait. Uh, it's all faded up. I mean, it's just a dominating little uh, crankbait. The parrot color, too, which is the chartreuse or blue back. Both of these are baits that I love if I'm fishing... Uh, either in the springtime and the fish seem to be a little bit more uh, lethargic. If I'm fishing on the river for smallmouth, absolute dynamite. Or if I'm fishing kind of later in that end of summer, early fall period where the, the fish are really keying in on little baits, this little tiny rattling fat wrap is a dynamite one. I love those things. I've caught so many fish on them. Uh, another one, you guys know I'm a big fan of these. I talk about them quite a bit. But the old Uncle Josh pork frogs, I know that they've come back out with them again. Uh, I can't say I've spent a whole lot of time with them, uh, but I really, really love the old school pork frogs. I've got a pile of them. I still use them all the time. A little tip for you guys out there, if you do have them, you might want to try them on a vibrating jig. Uh, it's a trailer that'll last all day, it gives your bait completely unique action, and can be absolutely dynamite on that. Uh, so that's something that I still really like to use them for. I grew up fishing them on a Uncle Josh, uh, I'm sorry, a Johnson Silver Minnow with the Uncle Josh pork frog on the back, fishing them through like lily pads and stuff like that. Uh, don't really do that much anymore, even though it still would catch fish. Now I use them much more as a straight jig trailer or a vibrating jig trailer. Absolutely dynamite for that. Uh, another one of my all-time favorites is this guy right here. This is the Excalibur XRK50. Uh, the XR series, the, you know, is just an absolute dynamite series. This is the ghost color. Uh, probably my favorite. I, it has accounted for several of my biggest fish. And five, three of my top five bass I've ever caught have been on this bait. That color, to be specific. I caught a 10 and a half in a tournament at Lake Chickamauga. That did not win big bass, crazy enough. Uh, I caught a hit Lake Gunnersville. I had one that was like a seven and a half. And then I had another one that was like a roughly an eight pounder on it as well down in Florida. Catches them all over the place. I, you know, I wish they had not discontinued it. And I know everyone out there is going to say Booyah makes the same bait. It's not the same bait, in my opinion. Does not perform nearly as well. That's my opinion. I'm not knocking the Booyah bait. I just feel like the old XR Excalibur series were way, way better. Um, moving down the line, this is another one. And all these I've kind of talked about on the channel at one time or another. This is the Mega Bass Vision 110 Silent Riser. So it's a, a slow float bait. And to me, this is a critical, critical bait for me when I'm fishing really shallow smallmouths, when I say shallow, I'm talking like in that five, six foot range where I've got a lot of rock. You know, a lot of our lakes up here have a lot of zebra mussels. And the problem with that is the jerk baits, if you're fishing them and they hit that range, well, 
if you continue to work it, you're just diving down into it. I really like that silent riser because it'll actually, I can let it float up off the bottom, get away from those zebra muscles, and I can continue to work it. There's also something to be said for having a floating jerk bait at times, especially I feel like during the uh, early spring period, it seems like that's a good way to generate some strikes. But that silent riser, man, I wish they, I wish they'd come back out with that. A lot of really good colors in that silent riser uh, class, but it's a, it's an absolute killer. I dominate with it, you know, on most smallmouth lakes around here. It just is one of those baits that I've always got tied on. And then moving into the last one. This is one of my all-time favorites as well. This is the Lucky Craft Wake Tail. This is their yellow shore minnow, or the Impact Yellow, I think is what they call it. It's basically the old school yellow shore minnow uh, color that you found like on old like head and lures and the old river runs, stuff like that. Uh, but an absolute dynamite prop bait. The cool thing with that bait is instead of sitting horizontal in the water, it sits tail down. And you end up a lot of times getting fish where it's almost like watching a bobber. You see the bait, the top of the bait sitting upright, and then the bait just gets pulled under. And it's like they come up, grab that bottom tail, and they disappear with it. So it's a it's a very cool bait. The, the best part about it, though, is it's the most free-flowing prop that I've ever seen. So it's got a little prop on the bottom, probably a little bit hard. I don't really want to take it out of the box just because it is a old discontinued one. I'd rather keep it new in the box at this point. But... That prop sits on like a rivet, which goes up into the bait. And that rivet allows it to spin extremely freely. So if I'm fishing, uh, basically when you, when you twitch it, it'll dive down underwater and come up. And because it's so free flowing, when it comes up, that prop will spin on the way up and then continue to spin as your bait is sitting there. So if you're fishing a place like current too, like on a river, you can just hold your bait there and the prop just spins beautifully. Uh, but these are these are five of my absolute all-time favorite baits. They've all been discontinued. Yeah, honestly, if I see one somewhere, I tend to buy it regardless of price, assuming it's not like absolutely crazy. Um, they're just really tough to come across. But keep your eyes open and you might find a couple like I found at that garage sale the other day. Uh, it just puts a smile on my face anytime I can add a new bait that's been discontinued to my collection. So let me know in the comments section, what are your all-time favorite discontinued baits that you have a hard time passing up if you were to see one for sale somewhere? Let me know because I'd love to uh, add a few more to my collection if I can find them. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned, new one coming out tomorrow.